The Zelda series isn't necessarily known as the pinnacle of game storytelling, but the consequences of Ocarina's ending created one of the most debated and complex timelines in gaming. You'll either disprove or admire the originality of Zelda's lore. The way the game's stories connect isn't for everyone, but today I'll be ranking my 5 favorite parts of the Zelda timeline. What's up my homies, it's Edible Incredible, and to begin my list, let's cover the current finale of the timeline, the tale of the Great Calamity. 10,000 years after the Sheikah's prime and the sealing of the first calamity, omens of its return were spreading across a high rule that abandoned what saved the world in the past, the Sheikah's advanced technology. To seemingly avoid the second calamity's utter destruction of Hyrule, its king ordered the technology of the past to be unburied and used once more. This decision turned out to be fatal, it caused the collapse of the royal family along with the champions. Link was even on the brink, but got saved by the power of the Shrine of Resurrection. He woke up a hundred years later without knowledge of his past self, he freed the corrupted divine beast and erased the calamity just as it broke free from Zelda's clutches. The entire story of Breath of the Wild from 10,000 years prior involving the Sheikah's prosperity, up to the sealing of the second calamity is my fifth favorite section of the Zelda timeline. My fourth is the events between Majora's Mask and Twilight Princess, the return to Hyrule for the Hero of Time. This is one of the most speculated parts in the whole chronology. Did Link ever find Navi, and how did he lose his eye? The mystery of the final chapter of Link's life is something that will always intrigue me. Even though we'll probably never find out the truth, it's the unknown that drives our curiosity. During the same period, the presumed Gerudo Hylian War was raging, resulting in the Gerudo abandoning their home or dying in at home, which is just another enigma that will always accompany this branch of history. The way it's open to interpretation is one of the main reasons this is a favorite segment of mine. So originally I had Zelda sending Link back spawning the timeline split as my number 3, but since I just made a video about the Hero of Time's journey, I'm in the mood to talk about a contrasting finale to Ocarina Time. Ganondorf's Triumph Following his glory over Link, Ganondorf secured the complete Triforce and transformed into the Demon King. Instead of being sealed in the void of the Evil Realm like in the Adult Timeline, he was confined along with the Triforce in the Sacred Realm by the Sages. Since knowledge of the Golden Relic was made public by Ganon's recent acts, many sought out the artifact but were consumed by evil upon entering the Sacred Realm. This era is particularly interesting because it presents a version of Hyrule that witnessed Ganondorf's total victory. The aftermath caused Hylians to lose faith in the royal family, and so many were trapped in the realm because of their greed. I love dark themes in Zelda games, so knowing that this iteration of Ocarina's ending translates to the story of Link to the Past is a dreadful yet compelling way to start the downfall timeline. Next is the tale of Skyward Sword. I just couldn't leave this off the list. This, the creation of the Master Sword, the beginning of a cycle, and the foundations of Hyrule make for a Zelda story that echoes all the way to the end of the timeline. For all the hate this game receives, its story alone is the best in the franchise. The way Demise first emerged from the depths of the earth is almost poetic as if he's the devil himself. And I love how Link and Zelda are childhood best friends living on a rock in the sky that the goddess Hylia put there. Skyward Sword marks the introduction to the series but also the end of the old Zelda formula. And lastly, my favorite Zelda story is the events leading up to the Wind Waker, the Great Flood. So in the downfall timeline, people lost trust in the royal family and were consumed by their desire to have the Triforce for themselves. Contrary to that, in the adult era, they were blinded by their belief in the hero of time. In this era, the Hero of Time's achievement in defeating Ganon was passed down through generations. When the evil king returned, people were hopeful the hero that could travel across time would save him. Little did they know this hero was sent back to his own time, the child era. But they continued to pray for this hero even as Ganon spun this world back into despair. The king of Hyrule decided to entrust his kingdom to the gods, who flooded the world to seal Ganondorf once again, but at the cost of wiping out so many innocent lives. 
This sets up the story of The Wind Waker, where the Hero of Winds put an end to what the Hero of Time started, and at least made the catastrophe of the Great Flood not entirely in vain. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Feel free to let me know what your favorite Zelda story is and why. As always, I hope you all stay hyped. Peace!